a particular uh, case study that I did, that I worked on with, uh, with a company a few years ago. It was a very, very large petrochemical producer, and they were upgrading to a brand new HMI. Uh, they were also getting a new, brand new advanced process control application. And for those of you that don't know what advanced process control is, uh, essentially it's an application that's used to optimize operator actions and essentially make these actions faster than an operator would do on their own and therefore improve production. I know for all you APC engineers it's not 100% technically accurate, but it's good enough for this particular uh, presentation. Now, their objectives. What they wanted to do was to eliminate the manual data entry that I talked about earlier. And second, they wanted to reduce the complexity, the maintenance, and the overall cost of this entire system. Seems like pretty lofty goals. In other words, what they really wanted to do was to minimize the short term and their long term costs. And so they were looking at an OPC way to do this as well as a non OPC way. And so that's what we'll talk about here. So let's compare these two different ways. Well, in their proprietary solution, in other words, not using OPC, when they ripped out the HMI, they would need four brand new drivers, one to each of the systems that the HMI was connected to. Then they needed three new uh, drivers to the maintenance system. Uh, of course, these were all manual before. These were the manual data entry uh, passed before, but now they wanted to automate it, so they needed uh, three new drivers for the maintenance system. Then they needed four new drivers for the advanced process control application. So here are the uh, four new uh, drivers for the advanced process control application. Now, these, uh, the, these folks figured, the, uh, the integrator figured that it would take them around 19 days to put all of this together and would cost approximately $78,000. Now, am I saying that all proprietary installations cost 19 days and cost $78,000? No, that's not really my point. The point I'm trying to make is that in this particular installation, the integrator figured that it would take them about 19 days and $78,000. Well, along comes the OPC solution. And how does this work? Well, what they did is actually restructured the data flow from scratch. It's pretty neat, actually. What they added are four brand new OPC drivers, one connected to each of the control systems, as you see right here on the bottom. And uh, each one of these applications that they were already using turned out that they already had built-in OPC connectivity. So they're actually able to take the OPC data directly and bring it right up to all the different applications. The ERP, uh, the Enterprise Resource Planning, and the maintenance system were already OPC compliant. So once again, the plant was able to bring the data right back up to the, uh, to the ERP and the maintenance system uh, directly. As a result, they had far, far easier maintenance because as you see here, there are far fewer drivers and there's far less integration. Now, it turned out that the project was actually done, and I mean done in only three days. And that actually includes the entire time that they ripped out the, the old drivers and put in the new drivers. And it ended up costing them approximately $13,000. Now, again, am I saying that all OPC projects take three days and are $13,000? And the answer is no, absolutely not. I'm just using this as a comparison. In this case, the saving was had from, number one, fewer drivers, and number two, far, far less integration. So how was this done? Uh, how was this actually put together physically? In other words, what was the physical implementation? Well, these guys had a control network. And as you see here, there are three different PLCs connected to a PC. And the first thing that you should notice is here's the OPC server at the bottom right. And what you see is that OPC is actually a software application. When we talk about an OPC server, we're talking about software. We're not talking about the hardware server. We're not talking about the physical server. And you can see the one OPC server is able to connect to three different uh, PLCs and there's no conflict whatsoever. So one OPC server can communicate with multiple controllers at the same time. On the other side, we had a control network with three different PLCs. The, uh, connected to a PC. The PC was also connected to the two other control systems. So you see here that one, P one PC is connected to three different families of control systems, different ways. One was Ethernet, one was SCSI, one was Serial. And here we see the three OPC servers all residing on one PC. First thing you should notice 
is that multiple OPC servers can reside on the same PC. There's absolutely no conflict whatsoever. And you can see that these OPC servers can, can live together quite harmoniously. No problem, one connecting in a, a serial, one connect, connecting SCSI, another one connecting Ethernet. Problem whatsoever, there's absolutely no conflict. Now above this, they had the operations network, sometimes called the level three network. And on the operations network, they had the different HMIs. They also had the advanced process control application, and they had the historian. Again, what you see here is that all these applications are able to communicate with all of the controllers directly through OPC. In fact, the OPC servers would marshal all of the communication directly to the PLCs. And they would, uh, so they take all of the reads and all of the writes and everything, all of the communication goes directly to these OPC servers. Above that, on the uh, level four, was the business network where they had the enterprise resource planning application and the maintenance system. And as you see here, the business network was actually connected to the operations network via the historian, which is a popular thing. Many, many plants are actually uh, working this way. Well, they ended up actually expanding their installation. They added a reporting application on their operations network. Again, it used OPC, so they didn't need any new drivers. They added a configuration application, again, using OPC, so they didn't need any new drivers. They added a business analysis application that was connecting to the, uh, to the historian. They um, retrofitted Microsoft Office with some OPC connectors, which was pretty cool, so they could bring in OPC data directly into Excel, right on their business network. And, of course, they were connected to the internet. They had their firewall, and they had Internet Explorer. So they were doing some really cool things. They could actually take a look at the um, uh, at data that was coming live from the internet and at their plant, so they were able to look at production data, and they were able to look at data coming from the internet at the same time. Now, I know you're asking, boy, what use is this? Well, uh, one of the things that they were able to do is to take a look at power prices. So at one point in time, uh, the power prices, because they were buying power on the spot market, what was happening is that uh, they noticed that uh, the power prices were climbing up so high that they made a real-time decision to stop their production and instead of using up power, they would export the power because they also had a cogeneration plant uh, at, uh, on the site, so they were actually able to export power uh, to, the, um, to the grid, to the power grid, which was kind of neat because they were able to say in real time, okay, let's shut down our plant and instead let's provide power to the grid and actually make more money. Now that's some, uh, some serious uh, business applications using OPC. Why were they able to do this? Because they were able to see the real time production and the real time cost all on one screen and all of this data was coming in using OPC.